then I have to put last row. Okay. Now, and my project, in case some of you don't know, it is at the end of my lecture notes. You see, this one is 5104. You have it, what? You have this whole file. This is 5104. This is 6104. All right, project. Five one oh four project. Okay, so after tonight, five one oh four people, you can go and start um doing Okay, like I say just now, uh, some books call it variable structure. control and we will use it interchangeably. So when I say variable structure, I say sliding control, they mean the same thing. Okay. Now then, um, Okay, so let us start. We start, we assume that the plan is given by this. All right, differential equation. So this is the plan. Now, F1 and G1 can be nonlinear non-linear like sine, cosine, square root, all right, square. And then the first thing we do, we, we put it in a form whereby we can start to do maths. We put it in the so-called state space. Form. So it's quite standard. We will define the state x1, x2, x3. Now then it's all happy just that my way of defining here is xn will be equals to y, xn minus one is dy dt, and xn minus two is d2y dt squared. Okay, if you define the states like that, y is the output. If you define the states like that, then you can write down in state space form like that. Okay, this should be fairly standard state space. Okay, uh, before I go on, this sliding mode control, the way I teach would be, I we will basically go through four rounds. All right, so that after four rounds, you will understand this sliding mode control idea. The first round, which I'm going through now, I will just tell you what to do, okay? Step one, step two, step three, step four. I will not explain why. So the first round when I go through, all you need to do is to, oh, okay, step one, do this, step two, do this, step three, do this. So you just know what to do, what to do, what to do. Then when I finish, finish all what to do already, then I'll go back to round two. Then I'll explain why you do this, why you do that. So round two, I'll explain why. All right. Of course, round three, there will be uh, tutorial questions and so on. Then you can... Uh, look at the concept some more. 
Then, of course, round four, you have to do your project. So hopefully, after four rounds of the same thing, the same topic, you finally understand this topic. Okay, back to here. So if you define the states like that, then it is standard that it will end up in this state space form. Uh, for those not familiar, then you see state space form, the left side is always those got dots on x1, x2, x3, but all got dots. And then on the right side, all no dots. They're supposed to write a matrix that connect the dots with the states without the dots. So if you look at how it has been defined, then you see, hey, I got xn dot. How to connect with the one without dot? Then you look at here, xn. All right. By the way, just to say, it is mass notation. If you put a dot here, it is the same as dx dt. All right. Differentiate with respect to t is x dot. That is max, right? So, which means if I put a dot here, I must also put a dot here. And if I put a dot here, y dot is the same as dy dt. So, these two are the same. So, which means x dot, xn dot is actually the same as dy dt, and dy dt is actually the same as xn minus 1. So that's why the last line you will have xn dot is equal to xn minus 1. Then you see xn dot here's a 1 here is multiplied by xn minus 1. The rest all 0. So xn dot is equal to xn minus 1 if you multiply the last row. Okay, so then you you find that continue the same. If you put a dot here, then this one you must put d two y. You must differentiate one more time. When you every time you put a dot, it means you differentiate with respect to t. So this become d two y dt square. So this one will become the same as this, all right? And then this will be the same as, this one would be the same as this one, all right? And this one would be then the same as xn minus one. All right, same pattern. That's why you find that you have the same pattern all the way up to here. All right, the rest are all zeros. Then the last one, obviously, x2 dot. x2, if you put a dot here, you must put a dot here. So if you put a dot here, you differentiate one time, which means it's not dn minus 2 or dn minus 1. It's n minus 1. Then this is the same as this, and this is actually x1. So that's why this x2 dot is actually equals to x1, all zero except one here. Yeah. All right, so this is standard. Then you, you have all the way up here. Then the first row, how you get the first row? The first row, you go and look at the original equation. Then you see all. x1 dot. So x1 dot, you put a dot here. So this one, you have to put a dot. So it becomes dny dtn. And this is this one, which is f1 plus g1u. So that's why it is here. All right, so with that, you will then get into this state space form. Then you just reorganize things a bit. 
all right, reorganize things a bit, then you will get this vector, this vector U. U is the control input. So this one, I just call it F. This one, I just call it U, G. Then U is here. Okay, then the next thing that you have to do, this is what, uh, is to define a switching surface that sum of the states. So a switching surface or switching line, sigma is defined as P1, X1, P2, X2, P3, X3, and so on. Now, P1, P2, P3 are design parameters that you will have to choose. And later on, I have to teach you how to choose. So now I just tell you that you need to choose them. All right. And once you define this, choose P1, P2, P3. All right. It will, for a start, not be equals to zero. Okay, at first it will not be equals to zero. So what is PT? It's nothing. So we 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 like to write things in in matrices and vectors. So that's why if this is if just two states only, then x will be x1, x2, which is like that. Then PT would be just this one, P1. P2. All right, so this will be this, and this will be this. All right, this is an example for which is just a two states. Now, just to remind you, what are all the x1, x2? They are all the states. So this, this one is, this xn is y. Now, again, I will have to tell you what to do. You have to choose things such that you choose P1, P2, P3, such that this has all the roots in the left-hand side. All right. So what is S? S, you can think of as a Laplace variable. So, you know, we use Laplace, it will be S. So when you form this polynomial, you equate to zero. You solve for S, all the roots must be on the left half plane. Again, later on, I'll teach, I will tell you why. Now you just know that you need to do this. Then the next thing is that you need to define a control law. All right. You have to introduce a Lyapunov function that is a square function of the sigma. Remember sigma we already defined here. So you have to choose a V function or Lyapunov function that is a square function of the sigma. Then now a, a V function, a square function has this, this property such that, oh, it will always be positive. So V will always be positive. So let me go and draw somewhere. Okay. So this is our V function, it is sigma square over two. So a square function will always be positive. So don't need to talk about negative. And then this is time. Now, if there's one more thing that I impose on this V function is that the time derivative, which means V dot or DVDT 
will always be negative for all values of t. Then the following will happen. What is dv dt? dv dt is the slope of the curve. All right, dy dx is the slope of the curve when you have x-axis and y-axis. So I have v-axis and t-axis. So dv dt will be the slope of the curve. And if I make sure that the slope is always negative, that means what? You know, negative slope is like that. All right, positive slope is like that. Hey, correct. Huh? Hey, since young, we all draw x, y curve. When you have a positive slope, the gradient is like that. A negative slope is like that. So if the slope of the VT graph is forever negative, then whatever curve I have here, whatever starting point, the slope must always be negative. So the, 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 the VT curve must always drop. Then it will drop to zero. It cannot go below zero because it is a square function. And because the slope for all values of V, the slope is always negative. So it must always slope down. It must always drop. So this is the only, the, the, the curve VT curve must look like that. Okay, so now, so we now go and see what we do to make this happen. So now we already define the V that's like that. It's a square function. Then now I'm going to find the slope. So I do dV dt. So you go and differentiate this, you will get this. Then, you get this. All right. So sigma is here. Sigma dot, since sigma is defined by this, so if I put a dot here, I will have to put a dot here. Wait, sorry, sorry. I have to put a dot here. Okay, because P are constants. So in other words, I put a dot here, I put a dot here. So I put a dot here. Okay, so sigma dot is PTX dot. So sigma dot become PTX dot. Then what is x dot? Go back and do some more algebra. I'm going to look for x dot. No, x dot is this one here. This x dot equal, equal, equal. x dot is f, g, u. So I just do algebra. I substitute x dot as f, g, u. So f, g, u. Pt is in front. So Pt is in front. So the slope is now given by this expression here. And then I say, I want the slope to be negative. Okay, I will make it negative. How to make it negative? U is the control power, is the power that you calculate or the force or the voltage or the current that you calculate using your computer. So I'm going to calculate U according to this formula. Why I choose this formula? Because if I calculate U, the, the voltage according to this formula, then you see if I substitute this inside here, what will happen is that denominator PTG and PTG will cancel away the PTG. All right, numerator got a minus PTF, here got a plus PTF, so this also will cancel. So after what is left behind is 
the slope is just equals to this. What is a sine function? There's a sine function here. All right, if you ask MATLAB, MATLAB will tell you sine function is basically only one or minus one or zero. If whatever is inside the bracket is positive, that is one. If it's negative, it is minus one. If it is zero, then it's zero. Okay, then some books write S-I-G-N, some write S-G-N. So we'll take it as the same thing. All right. So now the slope is given by this. And you see this, there's a mu here. Uh, again, mu is a design parameter that you have to choose and I will have to teach you how to choose. Okay. So, and you will definitely choose mu to be a positive number. All right. So you just choose it to be a positive number. Then you see this will always be positive. All right, if sigma is positive, then sine is one. It's always positive. If sigma is negative, sine is minus one. Again, it will become positive. So sine times, sine sigma times sigma will always be a positive quantity. And since mu you choose and you choose it to be positive, so, and then we have a negative sign in front. So the slope is always negative. As long as sigma is not equal to zero. Okay. So now the conditions are all there. So now let's go back and see. If we start with B, which is sigma square, is let's say positive, easier to discuss. Anyway, sigma square is always positive. So if sigma is positive, sigma square is positive. Even sigma is negative, sigma square is also positive. So you start somewhere here. All right. Then because you make sure that the slope is always negative. All right, you will have the following conclusion when you wait long enough. All right, one, the first conclusion is from equation seven and 10, sigma will be equals to zero. Seven is this one. Seven says that your V is, a square function. Then says that the V slope is always negative. So from seven and 10, you must conclude that if T is long enough, sigma must be equal to zero. How come you look at the picture here become obvious? Because the, it is always positive and the slope is always negative. And so you must always chop, 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 chop. So you wait long enough, you will reach t, you will reach sigma equals to zero. It cannot reach sigma equals to minus, all right? Because v is a square function. So you will reach sigma equals to zero. So this was conclusion one. All right, here, the slope is negative. Conclusion two, okay, so conclusion one, you see, now I have to erase this. When I first started, sigma is not equal to zero. 
conclusion one means that sigma will be equal to zero. Okay, if you wait long enough. So I erase this. So sigma will be equals to zero from conclusion one. And when sigma is equal to zero, you will have conclusion two. Conclusion two from equation five you, you will get y equals to zero. Where is equation five? All right, this is equation five. From this equation, you, sigma is equals to zero. From this equation, you will be able to conclude that y will be equals to zero. And it is this part here. Later on, I will explain to you why is that so. All right. Conclusion two, this part, this whole of this part is sigma equals to zero. The whole of this part is sigma is not equals to zero. Okay. I think you go for a 15 minutes break now, you, I, you come back, then I'll rerun through the whole thing again, and then I'll explain to you why you do this, why you do that. All right, go and take your dinner or what or what. I will, I will pause the recording. Okay, so just now I say, you have to choose sigma, the switching surface. And it is P1, X1, P2, X2, P3, X3. So to understand things, let's just think of a second order system, X1, X2. You only have X1, X2. And make life easy, you choose P1 as one and P2 as one, let's say. So you can then visualize, hey, what is sigma? If you choose P1 as 1, P2 as 1, then sigma for a second order system is just X1, X2. X1 plus X2. What is X2? If you look, X2 for second order system will just be Y, and X1 will just be Y dot or dy dt. So if you just think of car, what is y, y will be the distance, dy, dt will be speed. It's a way to imagine things. All right, so x, x2 is distance, x1 is speed, because x2 is y, x1 is dy, dt. All right, and so what is sigma now? Sigma, if you choose p1 is one, p2 is one, then sigma is just Distance plus speed. Oh, so if you imagine distance plus speed, okay, imagine we have a car, you control the distance and the speed of the car. Ah, that sounds natural enough. And just continue with this example, say that we are somewhere in Malacca, <clears throat> in Malaysia, 150 meters away, no, 150 kilometers away. So I can draw, like in primary school, I can go and draw a speed versus distance graph. Okay, let me draw here. So let's say this is the distance, which is x2. This is the speed. y dot is x1. All right. So when we first start, we are in Malaysia, maybe in Malacca, and that is 150 kilometers away. So my x2 or y is 
150. So at that time, I'm driving home to Singapore. I want to go home. At that time, my speed of my car is 50 kilometers per hour. So then, <clears throat> at time, we go to zero. I would then be here. All right, a distance of 150 from my home with a speed of 50 kilometers per hour. That will be my sigma. Okay. Then what I want to do, I want to go home. Go home means where? Which means I want my car to be here. Distance from home is zero and the speed is zero. So park outside my car, my house, park in my house. All right, so the control problem is I want to go home. <clears throat> now, what we have discussed so far is what, so which means when I first started here would be x1 plus x2 is sigma, x1 plus x2, is sigma P1 is 1, P2 is 1. This is 150, this is 50. So sigma is 200. Hello, are you all with me? Hey, yes or no? Yes. Okay, <laughs> give some feedback. You know, I will repeat, repeat and repeat, you know. Okay, so 200 sigma square would be 200 square, then divide by two you'll be at t equal to zero, I'll be here. 200 square divided by two will be my V. My V value will be here. All right, for my example. So it is 200 square divided by two. This will be at t equals to zero. Yes? Okay, then you look at this graph. I got conclusion one. I say if you wait long enough, my V or my sigma will be equals to zero. My slope is always negative. I make it so because my voltage that I calculated using or my control signal or my control power, I calculated using this formula to make sure my slope is always negative. Because my slope is always negative, so my V will always, if you wait long enough, all right, later on we, I will then show you how long you have to wait and so on. But now just say long enough, you will reach sigma equals to zero here. Sigma equals to zero. The math says what? Sigma is x1 plus x2. Because p1 is one, p2 is one. We choose one. Later on, I will show you how to choose. But to make life easy, we choose p1 equals one, p2 is one. So sigma equal to zero means x1 plus x2 is equal to zero, or distance plus speed is equal to zero. So go back and draw, look at this. Distance plus speed equals to zero, or sigma equal to zero, is actually a 45 degree line here. This, you, you take any point here, x1 plus x2 will be equal to zero. Okay? So now, I'm supposed to reach sigma equal to zero. So, which means, if I draw here, <clears throat> I'm supposed to zero. At some t, I'm supposed to be equals to sigma equals to zero. So, which means at some t, Starting from here, I'm supposed to reach this line. 
I don't know where on this line. It just say I will become sigma equal to zero. It didn't say sigma equal to zero here, 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 or here. But it will just say sigma equals to zero. So which means if I draw, then I'll just draw. Ah, oh, okay. From here, I am guaranteed to come to maybe here. Okay, just just any point. On here would be my part one. Okay, this co correspond, this part one, correspond to this part one, and correspond to this part one. Okay. Are you recording me? It's recorded in Zoom. Oh, okay, okay. Let me see. Okay. Uh, okay. So now we have explained up to part one. So part two from equation five, y will be equal to zero. How come equation five, y equals zero? Let's look at our simple example. This we say only two states, second order x1, x2. So my sigma must be equals to I need some space here so that okay, so Sigma is equals to P1, X1 is actually Y dot plus P2, this is actually Y. All right, so this is Sigma. And in for phase two, it is equals to zero. And this equation we, we can solve one is this is a year one electrical engineering problem. So we solve it using Laplace. So this one, I take Laplace, I'll get P1. Laplace of this is S. Laplace of this is, okay, then this one is equal to zero. So this one, if I rewrite, I should get S Y S is equals to P one Y zero over P one S plus P two. Okay, and this one, you go and look at inverse Laplace table. It will give you Y T is equals to Y not e to the power of minus p2 over p1 t. Okay, so from here, you can see in, in our simple example, p1 is one, p2 is one. So if t, you wait long enough, y t will be equal to zero. Yes. Okay. So you can see for yourself this one because sigma is equal to zero. You work out the math, it will say that if you let t equals to infinity, then y will be equal to zero. So, which means conclusion two.
you will get y equals to zero from equation five. Equation five is this one, which for the simple case of second order is this one. So I just show you y will be equal to zero. So a few things to say, which means I reach home. Okay, so I go home ready. So which means if I on this distance versus speed diagram, phase one is here, phase two will be, now once it reach sigma equal to zero, it will always stay in sigma equal to zero. It, it, it cannot come out here and then come out here. <laughs> once you reach here, it will stay here. It cannot go to negative because it's a square function. It cannot, this curve cannot go to positive because that means the slope is positive. So because the slope is forever negative, once you reach here, it will stay here. Hello, are you with me? If you stay here, here is what? Here is sigma equals to zero. So which means I cannot come here, draw here, draw here. I cannot. I can only stay on this line. Okay. And we concluded that y was be equal to zero, which is this point here. So which means you stay on this line until you reach home here. And this would be your part two. Okay, a few more things that I need to say. Now you see, how come I, tell, I told you, A, you need to make sure the roots of this is on the left hand side. Look, it will, this is actually the pole here. For our second order example, this is the pole. Of course, here I write for, for nth order. Okay, so why must the roots on the left hand side? So that you have a stable pole. When you are stable, if you are unstable, then y will go to infinity. Okay, so you are stable. That's why you see. If you are stable, P1, P2 over P1 must always be positive, stable. Roots on the left-hand side. When roots on the left-hand side, your roots is P1S plus P2 equals to zero. So S must be equals to minus P2 over P2. One. So as long as P2 over P1 is positive, your roots is on the left-hand side. It's a stable system. So as long as P1 over P2 is positive, your pole is on the left-hand side. It's the same as saying, this is not unstable. It's the same as saying, so Y will be equals to zero after a long, long time. Okay. Okay, next, I will have to tell you, you just now, you just know that, eh, I'm somewhere in Malaysia, 150 kilometers from home. How long I reach home? So I have to tell you. How long will you take to reach home? Now we look at the next part. Think this is equal sign. Uh, the print print out is not good. Okay, so let's say that for a start, your we use this example. The initial value of sigma in our case is two hundred. So it's greater than zero. So oh, our example was I'm hundred and fifty kilometers in Malaysia. My speed is fifty. 
So sigma is speed plus distance. So it's 50 plus 150 is 200. So it's definitely positive. So for a start, my sigma is positive. So if sigma is positive, then equation 8 and 10 says this. Where is 8 and 10? Okay, 8 and 10. They are the same equation. So, sigma, sigma. So, which means sigma dot is equals to minus mu sine. And since for our example, sigma is positive 200, so sine is 1. So, which means sigma dot is equals to minus mu. Okay, it's just simple. It's just simple. Because it's 200, so this is 1. Then you compare this with this. So, which means mu is minus mu is just sigma dot. Okay, minus mu is sigma dot. And then these are secondary school differential equation. So, all you do is just solve it. So, this is d sigma dt equals to minus mu. Bring it over. So, it's d sigma equals to minus mu dt. So then you do an integration sign on both sides. Then you just match the limits. So at t equal to zero, you are 200 sigma naught. At t sigma, the, the, which is the, the time that your sigma becomes zero. So you match this. Then you integrate, you will get this. You, the formula will be like that. So if you we we derive this formula using sigma not positive, you can re-derive using sigma not negative. You'll find that then the is trivial and the final formula would be t the time to reach sigma equals to zero is actually given by this formula. Sigma zero over mu. So in other words, for our example, sigma was 200. If we choose mu as 10, let's take two hours. So which means, I'll go back to our example. How long it takes to go from here to here? It will be This journey all right will take P sigma equals to sigma naught. Sigma naught is this value here over mu. So in our example, this one is 200. So if I choose mu as standard. then I'll take 20 hours. I'll take 20 hours. If I choose me as 100, that takes two hours. Go from here to here. <clears throat> so I told you, mu is a number you will have to choose. So this is a design parameter. How fast your, you want to design your car, you choose mu. You design a sports car or what, then you choose mu as 200 or 500. Or 1,000 zoom. Okay. Then the next thing I say, I need to teach you. In our simple example, we just simply say, ah, choose P1 is 1, P2 is 1. 
All right. In practice, you have to choose P1, P2. You look, where is P1, P2? P1, P2 is here. You know, we like to write this transfer function in control. We like to write it like that. All right, divide numerator and denominator by P2, I'll get P1, P2, Y0 over P1, P2, S plus one. All right, this type, we always like to write it as K over ST plus one. Then we like to say, hey, this is the time constant. All right. And time constant is the time it takes to reach 63% of the final value. All right. So, which means what? We go back to our picture. For part two, why not? This is the y-axis, y not is here. So, okay, why not is here. Right, this is equals to T sigma. Why not is here? Why will go from why not to y equals to zero? This would be y goes to y, why not to y. Why not to zero? And here, 63% would be two thirds somewhere here. So the, you will go from here to here. So the time constant here would be what? P1 over P2. All right, P1 over P2. All right, it will go from here to here. It will actually go from here to here, but 63% will take P1 over P2 time. So again, P1, P2 is a design parameter. If like the simple example, you choose P1 as one, P2 as one power to go from here to here, then in practice, in control first order system, you take about three times constant to reach home. So you take from here to here is one hour, then two hour, three hour. Okay, if you choose P1 as one, P2 as two, then half an hour, one hour, one and a half hour, you reach home. Okay, so. Basically, the whole idea of the sliding control, the basic idea is all here. Now we look at some <clears throat> practical considerations. Uh, first of all, how come the whole thing work? It's just based on a simple idea that the slope is always negative. If the slope is always negative, then this picture will be true. Okay, if this picture is true, 
your sigma will, will always be equal to zero. Wait long enough. And when sigma is, is equal to zero, y will be equal to zero. And then you reach home. And how we make the slope always negative because we choose our control formula to be this so that if you substitute this into the slope equation, it becomes always negative. But in practice, you see, here we assume that PTG and this PTG can cancel. That means that our formula is very accurate. All right, what we write, we know exactly what is G. So when we write in, it will actually cancel the G of the plant. What if we don't cancel? If we don't cancel, then, <laughs> then and also F. If F, this F, the one, the formula, inside the formula, and this F, which belongs to plant, don't match, then again, PTF cannot cancel PTF. Then the slope will not look like that because it cannot cancel. If the slope don't look like that, then don't know whether the slope will be negative. If it's not negative, then sigma may not be equal to zero. Okay, but we there's a very simple requirement. We just need that this the slope to be always negative. That's all. So even if it doesn't cancel, but the slope is still is negative, no problem. So let's see how. So now I assume that we, we didn't cancel, which means our formula is not accurate. There's mismatch in modeling. The G and the F we use in our control calculation don't match the plan. So in this case, I will put the g here as g hat and f hat which means this is hat is like the one that you think so you put a hat there i think the g is this so i put a g hat g hat i think the f is this number so i put an f hat here the real f and the real g don't have the hat so if i put this one g hat f hat this one no hat no hat i use the same formula i substitute inside here all right i substitute this formula inside here. They cannot cancel. I will get this expression here. Earlier on, because G hat and G cancel, so this one is gone. This one is also gone. So you just left with sigma minus mu sine. But now G hat and G is not the same. G hat and G not the same. F and F hat is not the same. So they will not disappear. But our requirement is just the slope to be negative. So very simple. Basically, you see, there's a minus sign here. Basically, mu is a number that you choose. Choose it big, big, so that I don't care whether this is positive or negative, can cancel or cannot cancel. This is such a negative number such that, so the whole thing, the slope is still negative. That's all. So the idea is very simple. Choose mu to be very big, or just big enough so that you cannot cancel your positive doesn't matter i i minus even the more positive number here so the slope will still be negative all right so that is easy enough the next problem we have would be
the control law number nine chapters means what? Control law number nine. You see, control law number nine is here. What is sign? Sign is defined like that. When sigma is positive, it's one. When sigma is negative, it's minus one. When sigma is zero, it is zero. But you know, what is sigma? Sigma in our example is distance plus speed. And you know, in practice, zero will not be zero. You take the distance, you add on to the speed, you got measurement error, all right? You add, you got noise, you you measure also got noise, you measure the speed also got noise, you add, it will not be exactly zero. So in practice, zero could be 0 0.001 or minus 0 0.009 or minus 0 0.07 or plus 0 0.04, all right? We say it's practically zero, but because of noise, you will never be equal to zero. So what will happen is your formula then will be like that. Even though in practice, Sigma is equal to zero, which means over here, this part. But because sigma is distance plus speed, you will get distance, you go and measure, you've got sensor error, you've got noise, speed you measure, you also got noise. You will sometimes get sigma at 0 0.01, sometimes sigma minus 0 0.05. So you will get your sign, Sometime will be one, sometime minus one. Okay, and then if you look at your control voltage, you will see that, hey, this is sometime plus one, sometime minus one. Okay, then depending on what this number is, you will find that you have this number suddenly add to this, suddenly minus this, suddenly add this, suddenly minus this. That means that if you look at your control signal, you will see add minus add minus add minus add minus like that. Okay. No, I draw it properly for you. So add minus add minus add minus add minus. Okay, this number here. Later on, you'll see the tomorrow question. Oh, in practice, this will be very bad. You think of a valve that pumps petrol to the, the, the motor or in the chemical industry, the, the, the chemical flow, you have a valve that regulates the amount of chemical flow. This means the valve open, close, open, close, like that. All the wear and tear, after a while, you your valve will be spoiled. Okay, all the friction will spoil it. This one, control signal, the control voltage to the valve is like that, which means the valve will be like that. Okay, be like that, you cannot last for long. So, in practice, people don't use sign. So, in practice, it is we use, instead of S-I-G-N, we use SAT, S-A-T. So very simple, so which means everything is the same. Here, instead of S-I-G-N, you put S-A-T. Okay, in terms of writing, it's just like that. That's it. So in terms of meaning means what? In terms of meaning, sign, you draw sign like that. Let me go. How you draw the sign function? You draw the sign function like that. This is sigma. Okay, this is one, this is minus one. When sigma is positive, 
it is one. When sigma is negative, it is minus one. Okay, so this is the sine function. All right, so that's the problem. When sigma is zero, we will suddenly plus one, suddenly minus one, suddenly plus one, suddenly minus one. So to get rid of that, the set function basically looks like that. All right, this will be the set function. So that when sigma equal to zero, when it is a bit positive, it is not plus one, but you know, just uh, maybe plus 0 0.1. When it is minus, it's not minus one, maybe minus 0 0.2, because it's a slope here. Of course, there's a design parameter we normally call it epsilon. Yeah, also minus epsilon. You have to choose. Choose. Obviously, choose epsilon as small as possible. So you approach the ideal case of sine function. But when you reach the sine function, you got chattering. So you cannot go too close. You just go close enough such that you can accept the the chattering. The, the chattering is reduced to the extent that you can accept it, which means instead of like that, uh, you choose mu such that it is like that. Maybe you don't even like this. Depending on your application, you may choose mu, uh, sorry, sigma such that it is like that. All right, instead of jump all the way to plus one and minus one, you just jump a bit, jump. Jump a bit, jump a bit. So this one, which means the valve is just like that. All right, so, <laughs> so to what extent you can accept, it depends on your application. Of course, this would be the ideal case, but when you reach here, you your valve very quickly. So you try to be as close to this as possible without spoiling your valve. So you can choose your Epsilon. Okay, so now I think I'm here. Okay, so now let us look at one example and a tutorial question. To bring to put in all the numbers and put the ideas together. So consider the unstable system, all right? It's unstable, the pole is on the right side. Okay, and then this one would then correspond to this is the plan. All right, this is the plan. So it's F G U. So let's see. So this is the plan. This is F. This is G. And this is U. All right, so this is F, this is G, this is U. Right, sorry, I forgot. Write this in, there's a Y here. I forgot to put in the Y. Okay, so now, we look at the results first. Then later on, we look at the tutorial question, how to get the results. 
So this one, if you go and write in transfer function form, it looks like that, you will get a pole on the right side, it's unstable. So now if we choose sigma as what I call distance plus speed, the same, the simple example. All right. The formula equation nine will give you this. I think is PTF. This is PTG minus mu sine sigma. So if you stick in A and X, which is here, this is A. This is B, this is C. You stick in A and X here. All right, and you stick in B here, you will get this. So this would be the ideal case whereby you would get chattering. If you don't want chattering, then you replace sign with the set. Okay. If we then choose sigma as 0.5, MATLAB will show you this here. And if you draw the distance versus speed, I think that correspond to here. All right, you, this one is, you start with, X1, 1.5, X2 equals to zero. And then this, the MATLAB will show you like that then go to here. If you start x1, x2 as different, which means here sigma is one point, sigma naught is 1.5. If you choose here, then it will give you a different path. All right, this one will be your part one. From here to here will be your part two. All right, you will reach y equals to zero. This is y. This is y dot. So you'll reach home finally. MATLAB will show you all these things if you put it in. Okay, how to get this? Let's look, go through the calculation in, all right, for to get all this curve in the tutorial question. Look at the tutorial question, which is the same as this example. Okay, pay the last 10 minutes, then I'll stop. So pay attention for the last 10 minutes so that you don't miss it. Okay, tutorial question one is the same question as the example in the lecture. It's just that now we will go through the maths to see how those curves in the lectures are obtained. This is the formula in the lecture. All right, F and the G are the F would be AX, so you stick in AX, G is B, you stick in B, you will get this. All right, G is B, you stick in G. PT was chosen in the tutorial question as well as the lecture at 1-1. One, one. So you stick in all the number, you will finally get this. K is given in the question, we choose it at 0.5. 
So you will get this. All right, getting here is just taking the what is given in the question into the formula. Okay. If you can go back and double check, I give you all the numbers here. F would be this, which is AX. All right, this is B. The question or the lecture notes tell you what is A, what is X, what is B. So you stick it in, you will get this. So you stick it inside here, you will get this. Now, the plan is given by this. The plan is given by this. This is U. All right, which we got it from the formula here. So you stick it in here. So now you combine things, you will get this. Then at t equal to zero, x1 is 1.5, x2 is zero. So that means in this simple example, p1 is given in the question as one, p2 is one. So your sigma is actually All right, when you first start, sigma will be 1.5. So if sigma is 1.5, this guy here will be 1. So which means your first equation is just x1 dot equals to minus x1 minus 0.5. So if you want to solve it, you take Laplace. First row, this Laplace is this. All right, take Laplace of x1 dot is, you have to minus away the initial condition. Then Laplace of this is this. Because this is minus 0.5, Laplace of a constant is the constant over S. So Laplace of this is actually this. Okay, this is minus 0.5, sine is one. So Laplace of minus 0.5 is just minus 0.5 over S. So you, then nothing much. Here you take Laplace, you inverse Laplace of your X, you will get this. Then once you have this, you can draw. So, let t equal to zero, you find what is x1, t equal to one, what is x1, t equal to two, what is x1, t equal to three, what is x1. If you do that, you get this answer here. When t equal to zero is 1.5, then t equal to one, t equal to two, t equal to three, you just draw this curve, okay? using this equation here. Then we want to draw X2. X2, you look at the equation, X2 is equals to, X2 dot is equals to X1. So X2, you integrate X1, you get X2. So you integrate x1, you get x2. Since x1, you already found out 
So you stick that inside here. You integrate it, you will get this. This is an integration constant. Then of course, you just say, ah, at t equal to zero, x2 is zero. So you put zero here, zero here, zero here, you find that c is equal to two. So x2, it looks like that. Then once you get x2, you can draw. You, you go and draw t equal to zero. t equal to zero, what is x2? It will be zero because this zero, this minus two, this plus two, this zero. So x2 is zero. Then t equal to one. You, what is this? t equal to two, what is this? t equal to three, what is this? So if you do that, you will get this curve here. So you will get this curve here. Okay. Remember, in slightly mode, we have part one, part two. So far, is part one when sigma is not equals to zero. So this is part one. So I need to find out when part one end, part two in. So when part one end and part two begin, you remember, T equal to zero, then part one will end here. Then part two will begin. So part one, sigma is not equal to zero. V is not equal to zero. All right, part two, sigma is equal to zero. All right, or you can look at this curve here. This is part one. Sigma is not equal to zero. Part one, sigma is not equal to zero. Part two, sigma is equal to zero. So I need to find when part one end and part two begin. So which means I need to find when sigma is first equals to zero. So we go and look. Our sigma is x1 plus x2. So when it will be equals to zero, you got x2. So you stick that inside here. You got x1. You go and stick that inside here. So you got only one unknown t. You can solve and give you t equals to three. So at t equals to three, sigma is equals to zero. So which means at t equals zero, t equals one, t equals two, sigma is not equal to zero. And t equals three, sigma is equal to zero. So if I, so how should I say? This part, is part one. This part of the match is part one. All right, it ends at t equal to three. So this is part one of the match. Remember I derived, I'm finishing very fast, 10 more minutes. Okay, I look at you all so far. <laughs> You go back and look at the lecture notes. I derive a formula. T sigma is equals to sigma naught over mu. In this example, sigma naught is what? 1.5 mu is what? Oh, 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> I sometimes I use K, sometimes I use mu. 0 0.5. So it's also equals to three. So these two match. Okay, I could have used the formula. Remember, I, I derived this formula. No? Okay, you could have used the formula and give you the same answer. So part two. So part two, how to get the equation to draw part two? Okay, rewrite this one. So you got x2 dot equals to x1, no problem. So I will write. x2 dot equals to x1, no problem. Then what about I O? It's always easy to write down the state space. What about x1 dot is equal to what? But for part two, this is part two. We know that sigma, which is equal to x1 plus x2, is always equals to zero. So which means x1 is equals to minus x2. If you put a dot here, you put a dot here. So you will put x1 equals to minus x2 dot, and x2 dot is equals to x1, so it should be equal to minus x1. Okay, so this would be your state space. Okay, from here, there are two ways you can work with. One way you can work with is okay you this is the same as this but since we start at three so we will all write t plus three t plus three t plus three all right first then you use the same clock if you don't want you say you use a new clock <laughs> then you use a new clock then you use a new clock tall so this is no longer Tor, 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 tor. And the new clock, tor, is equals to the old clock plus three seconds. When old clock says, hey, no, not plus three, minus three. So when the old clock is three seconds, the new clock is zero. Okay, because this one, this part of the math is only good for uh, after three seconds. So you use a new clock. Tall. If you don't want, you use the same old clock, then you all this you just have plus three plus three plus three. The mass will come out to be the same. Just remember you use tall or t. 
All right. I have no preference. You do whatever you like. So here shows plus three. You take la plus of this, you will get this. You take la plus of this, you get this. You go and rewrite x will be like that. You go and inverse, you will get x1 like that. Then x1, since I use the old clock, so it should be three, four, five, six, seven. So if t equal to three, what is x1, t equal to four, what is x1, t equal to five, what is x1, go and draw, you will get this. All right, so is this one onwards. If you use the tall clock, then you know t minus three is tall. So you will put a tall here. Your answer will be a tall here. Huh? It's the same. Just remember. Then when you draw the time, tall equal to zero, don't go and start drawing here. You should draw here because this is t. Okay, simple thing like that. So then same thing, x2 dot is x1. So you want to find x2, you integrate x1. So you take this, integrate this. So you stick this inside. You will get this, find the integration constant is zero. So x2 is this. So let t equal to three, four, five, six, you will get this. If you use the tall clock, then this would be tall. All right, you will get the same curve. And this is the one that is given in the lecture. And if you simulate using MATLAB, you'll get the same thing. And if you want to draw this one, the, the distance versus speed graph that is Simple. There are two ways you can do. Of course, the simplest would be you just let t equals to three. What is x one? T equals three. What is x two? You just draw x one versus x two. So you will get one point here, and then let t. Equals to four, let t equal to four, find out what is x1, x2, you get another point here. All right, you'll find that you will get this line here for part two. All right, this line part will be part one. This is obtained the, the x1, x2 pair is obtained from here. You just look at t equal to zero. X1 is 1.5, X2 is zero. So you get one pair. So 1.5, zero, you get one pair. Then you look at here, at t equal to one, you will get this is maybe 0.7. Maybe this is minus something. No, not minus something. That one, you get this pair, one point here, one point here, and one point here. So you get that point. You should be able to get somewhere here. I don't know where, maybe it's here. All right, you go and find a pair, you get this. Or if you, if you want x1, x2 directly, x1 is like that, x2 is like that, you eliminate x t, you then can get x1 directly in terms of x2. Then you get this equation. All right, in terms of t, x2 is in terms of t, between the two equation, you eliminate t, then you just get x2, x1 directly. Then you get this curve. No, those are simple maths, nothing much.
All right. Then after that, here I didn't ask you to do, but if you go and go back and look at it yourself, you would be here. Where is you? Ah, you is this. When sigma is positive, sine is one, so you will be minus. 2x1 minus 0.5. The U signal is, I didn't draw it here, but I draw it. Maybe I draw it here. No, I didn't draw it here, but I draw it here. All right, draw it here. Nope, this is not the one. Yeah, this is the one. Minus 2x1 minus 0 0.5. We'll give you this curve here. All right. Then this curve here. Well, this is u. Will give you u equals to minus two x one minus zero point five sine sigma. All right, and since sigma is supposed to be zero, this in practice will not be zero. It will be plus one minus one. So here would be minus two x one plus or minus zero point five because this one plus one minus one plus one minus one very Okay, and don't forget where is x one? The x one value is here. The x1 value is this one, this curve here, substitute inside here, you got the equation. All right, this is x1, the x1 value, is the x2? Oh, I, I, I draw wrong. The x1 value is here, stick it inside here, you will get this one. All right. Then the x1 value is different equation now. Huh? Stick it inside here. Then you will get this one. Okay, I'll stop here tonight. And then uh, next week is a one week break. So no class. Next, next week, Prof Lee will come back because I'm not in Singapore. Then next, next, next week, then I will come back and teach. Okay, so I see you.